In the studio today, we have Austrian climber David Lama. He had an amazing year of climbing this year. He started off climbing the first free ascent of the compressor route on Cerro Torre, followed that up with a fast, stylish ascent of Eternal Flame on Nameless Tower. David, welcome to Epic TV. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. You've had a great year in the Alpine. You even uh, ticked off one of your all-time life goals. You, you put up the first free ascent of the compressor route on Cerro Torre. Can you tell us about that climb? That was, that was definitely one of the biggest things I, I could achieve so far because, you know, I had this, this idea of free climbing Cerro Torre in 2008 when I went to Coachimo Valley in Chile. And uh, I saw this picture and, of Cerro Torre and from then on, I just had this vision in my mind. So you had this huge achievement there, but it almost seems like he was overshadowed a little bit by Hayden Kennedy and Jason Kruk's controversial bolt chopping of the Maestri route, the Maestri bolt. Those guys made the first fair means ascent. You made the first free ascent. Can you tell our audience th what the difference is? You know, in 1970, Maestri put up the so-called compressor route with a, with a compressor uh, um, and a power drill and he put more than 300 bolts into the into blank faces um, that would have never been climbed without this compressor. And this is somehow a not very beautiful style to climb a mountain. It's more conquering a mountain. What Hayden Kennedy and Jason Kruk did was uh, climbing this route without the mastery bolts. So they just avoided these bolts and pulled themselves up on, on, on gear and aided their way up. And uh, what I did was free climbing the route, which means not climbing without a rope, but uh, which means to, to use the natural features only to pull yourself up on. Tell us how it felt to be the first person to free the top headwall of that route. You know, the top headwall is not so beautiful to climb. It's, it's some 7B climbing on some, some pretty loose rock and some big flakes. But getting to the summit then, you know, I felt definitely uh, some relief because you know I had this project, this vision uh, for so long and then finally could free the route. This summer you headed to Pakistan in the Karakoram range. The route Eternal Flame was first freed by the Huber brothers mm -hmm. in 2009. Tell us about your own experience on the route. Um, you know Eternal Flame is a really beautiful route like uh, on Triangle Tower the rock is just perfect and uh, especially the cracks on Eternal Flame are, are perfect. It's all hand jumps basically for a thousand meters and I wanted to go there to free the route um, but there was just too much ice in the cracks and uh, uh, we, we ended up uh, aiding a few pitches but I was, it was a good experience especially because we also went there to gain some more experience on, on high altitude climbing. Can you tell us what you believe the future of Himalayan climbing is going to be like? I believe alpinism is going to uh, go different ways. Like, uh, I don't think there is one single style that we have to do or that, is con that has to be considered the best style, but I think there is many styles that are, that are good and, and it definitely depends on, on what you want to do. You talk about style. Why is style so important in climbing? And why is it such a huge source of, of heated controversy and, and debate? That's basically all alpine climbing is about. It's about the style because uh, it's not, you know, to me alpine climbing is, is less a sport than, than really an attitude because you, you go there and you, you have this clear idea of, of your style and how you want to do this route or how you want to reach a summit and um, with this attitude you also say to yourself that if I'm not able to do it in this certain style that I have in my mind um, I'm better gonna leave it alone. How has your own attitude towards style evolved over the past few years? You know to me style has become more and more important um, also because of all the experiences I had on Cerro Torre. I mean style in the end it, it represents you and uh, if you're a climber, you want to do something in a good style and, and that's how you, you want to be known. What do you love about alpine climbing and what do you hate about it? Some people say alpine climbing is suffering and they might be right, yeah. But in the end, it's, it's a good experience. Why is that? Why is something that you suffer so much to achieve, why does it turn out to be such a good experience? 
it just gives you this stronger feeling, like you're, you're feeling more alive, maybe. What's coming up? What's ahead? In January, I'm going to fly to Patagonia again for my fourth consecutive year. And um, then I might fly to Alaska in uh, April and definitely going back to Pakistan in summer. Um, but it's not 100% clear what we're going to go for there. So how do we follow you on all your great adventures? Um, you know, I got a Facebook page, I got a home page. Okay. And uh, I hope I can come back to Epic TV again. Glad to have you back anytime. <laughs> awesome. Best of luck. Thank you.